everybody! Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. It's time for fall walks. I love walking all year round, but I especially love it in the autumn. And it's a good idea to bring water with you when you go for a stroll. So today, rather than carrying that bottle as you go out for a walk, we're going to show you how to make a really simple water bottle holder. This will fit a lot of different water bottle styles, but if you've got a really big water bottle, then we'll show you how to adjust this pattern to accommodate a wider bottle. And straps are kind of a personal thing too. You might be bigger or smaller than me, and we're going to show you how you can make the strap to fit your body the way you want to carry your bottle holder. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, grab our water bottles, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a water bottle holder together. In order to make our water bottle holders, I'm using a 100% cotton yarn today. This is a size 4 medium weight yarn. Cotton is heat and cold resistant and it absorbs extra water. Plus, it is easily washed and pretty durable, so I like cotton for this project. You want around 60 grams or 130 yards. You might want to have a measuring tape handy. This is good if you're using a bigger water bottle than I am. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using today is a 5 millimeter, also known as an H or an 8 in the US, a size 6 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. If you're using a water bottle that's drastically bigger than mine, I'd say my water bottle's pretty pretty um, average size. So some bottles are skinnier than this, some bottles are a little bit bigger, uh, but we are gonna make a pattern that's a little bit stretchy, so you don't have to worry too much. But if you're using a much bigger bottle than me, you wanna take your measuring tape and measure the diameter. So not the circumference, the diameter. Find the widest part of your water bottle and just run your measuring tape across it. So at the widest point, this is about three and a quarter inches or eight centimeters wide. So that's the diameter of the circle. So once we make our circle, it's the measurement across from one side to the other that we wanna pay attention to. So I'm gonna be making a base circle that's eight centimeters across in diameter, and that will be the bottom of this water bottle holder. So if you have a much wider water bottle, you're gonna to wanna to make it a little bit bigger. We are going to begin at the bottom of our water bottle holder. So we're going to start with a cinch circle. Chain one to secure your circle. And we're going to work six single crochet into our circle to begin with. Make sure you're working your single crochet stitches over top of your short tail so that we can cinch our circle shut when we're done. Once you have six single crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab your little short tail, cinch your circle up nice and tight, and we're going to be working in the round, so we're not joining our rows with a slip stitch. This is just to facilitate not having to deal with a seam or losing track of our stitch count. If you have trouble keeping track of the number of stitches in each row, you can use a stitch marker. Just put it on the top of the first or last stitch of each row, and that will help keep you sort of on track as we go around and around and around. Row two, we're gonna increase. We're gonna work two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. That first stitch is sometimes kind of tight. I'm gonna work over top of my short tails to weave them in. So two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. At the end of row two, you'll have 12 stitches. At the end of row two, you should have 12 stitches. We're gonna to continue to increase for row three. The pattern will be two single crochet worked into the first stitch. There's a little bit of my short tail still hanging out there. And one single crochet worked into the stitch after that. So two, one, two, one, repeated six times in total all the way around. You'll have 18 stitches at the end of row three. At the end of row three, we'll have 18 stitches. We're still increasing. So for row four, we begin with two single crochet in the first stitch and a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. You're gonna repeat that little pattern of two, one, one, six times in total, and we'll be up to 24 stitches at the end of row four. 
we have 24 stitches at the end of row 4. We want to continue to increase. So the first stitch of row 5 is 2 single crochet into the first stitch, a little increase, and then a single crochet into each of the next 3 stitches. So you're going to repeat that little pattern of 2, 1, 1, 1, 6 times in total, and at the end of row 5 we'll be up to 30 stitches. We've got a nice little circle forming here. That was the end of row 5. You should have 30 stitches. We're going to continue increasing for row 6, and you should sort of see the pattern by now. We increase on the first stitch, so 2 single crochet into the first stitch, and the pattern in row 6 is a single crochet into each of the next 4 stitches. So you repeat the pattern 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 6 times in total, and that brings us up to a stitch count of 36, at the end of row 6. At the end of row 6, we should have 36 stitches. Take your measuring tape and measure the diameter of that circle. So this is 3.5 inches here for me, or almost actually 9 complete centimeters. So that is exactly the size that I want to start with. Now we're going to just single crochet from here for a little while and that will also give it a little bit more width because you tend to loosen up as you just work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. If your water bottle is a lot bigger and you need a wider base diameter to begin with, then you can continue the increase pattern. So row 7 would be 2 single crochet into the first stitch, followed by a single crochet into each of the next 5 stitches, repeated 6 times. Row 8 would be 2 single crochet into the first stitch, followed by a single crochet into each of the next 6 stitches, repeated 6 times, and so on and so on. As you increase, your each row will increase by an additional 6 stitches. So if you need to make a wider base, you can go ahead and do that. The rest of the pattern will not change for you. You'll just have a larger stitch count. But for those of us that are going to stick with a stitch count of of 36 <laughs> and, and a diameter of three and a half inches or nine centimeters across. All we want to do now is single crochet in each stitch all the way around for four rows. So four rows of just straight single crochet. You can kind of relax now, turn your brain off for a little bit, and I'll catch up with you at the end of four more rows. At the end of row 10, so you've done four more rows of just straight single crochet, just continue to single crochet until your last stitch lines up with that little bump. See where row 1 turns into row 2, that little bump right there. Just make sure your last stitch lines up with that. That way you know you've got 10 even rows of single crochet all the way around. So we've got a bit of a bowl shape happening here, and if yours is wider, then that's fine because we're going to stitch switch now to a double crochet V stitch, which is going to give us even more flexibility so that um, depending on the water bottle you sort of slip into this thing, it won't be trapped or it won't be too tight. And it'll be a nice sort of open work thing so it can breathe too, especially if it's cold or hot. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch to just fasten off all of our rows of single crochet. So there's our little bowl. And now we're going to chain four to begin our V stitch row. So a chain four at the beginning of each of the double crochet V stitch rows counts as a double crochet. So the three chains is a double crochet plus a chain one. Into that same stitch, you're going to double crochet. So right, if you pull up, you see that little space there? Double crochet into that same stitch. And there's your first V-stitch. So your first V-stitch consists of a chain four and a double crochet. You're going to skip two stitches, find the third one, and work a double crochet. chain one, double crochet, all into the same stitch. And that's an actual double crochet V-stitch. Double crochet V-stitch is one of my favorite go-to stitches. It is just unbelievably useful for so many different projects. And that's the stitch we're going to use as we grow the length of our water bottle holder. So you skip two stitches, find the third, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into it, and you're going to repeat that little V-stitch pattern all the way around, and I'll hook up with you at the beginning. At 
at the end of our first row of v-stitch, which is row 11 of the pattern, you work your last v-stitch, you will have 12, and you're going to skip over those last two stitches, ignore this false stitch down here, just find the top of the chain three. So remember we did four chains, but you want to leave one chain. Find the third chain and join with a slip stitch to it. So then if you give your last row a bit of a, a pull, you see it that pulls your first V stitch into an actual V. So you should have 12 V stitches all the way around. Ah, I just love this little pattern. And that's how we establish the V stitch pattern for the length of our water bottle. Every V stitch row ends with a slip stitch into the middle of that V stitch that began the row. So right into the middle. So you join with a slip stitch and then V stitch into the center of the V stitch. So you're right in the space. And then each row begins with a chain four. Chain four counts as a double crochet, chain one. And then you double crochet into the same space. And working the V stitch is just so simple because all you have to do is worry about the next V stitch. So you're going to work a V stitch into the middle of every single V stitch. Don't be confused by the upside, sort of the triangle shape. So you've got two triangle shapes. You've got the V stitch triangle, so it's sort of like it's on its point, and then you've got the, the triangles in between where the point is kind of at the top. You want to skip the big spaces, identify that you're looking at a V stitch, and that's where you want to work your V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, into the middle of every single v-stitch, you should still have 12. You'll have 12 v-stitches in every single row. I'll catch up with you at the end of this row. At the end of every row of v-stitch, you get back to that first one you started, go up three chains, join with a slip stitch to that third chain, right? and then slip stitch into the center of that v-stitch. That sets you up for the next row. You'll have 12 v-stitches in every row. It looks something like that. I'm going to put my hand in it so you can see the actual stitch work. So every v is built into the top of the v from the previous row. That's how you know you've got the right number. You'll always have 12 v's in every row. We're going to work eight more rows of the v-stitch now. So eight more rows of the v-stitch and I will catch up with you at that time. At the end of row 20, you should have 10 rows of the V-stitch pattern and you can count it by just counting up the little V's all in a row. At the end of row 20, you want to join to the top of the chain three that began of the chain four that began your row, but you don't need to slip stitch into the center of that V. We are going to switch back now to single crochet. We want to do two rows of single crochet just to finish off the top and give it a little bit of strength. So we're going to chain one from where we are and single crochet into that same chain that we joined in. Next we're going to single crochet into the center of that v-stitch and then single crochet into the top of the other double crochet. So you're going to work three single crochet into the top of every v-stitch all the way around. So you'll still have 36 stitches so just like you did at the end of row 10 you'll have 36 single crochet stitches at the end of row 21. You can just work into the top of every double crochet into the actual center of the v-stitch and then into the top of the next double crochet. And you're going to do that all the way around. Once you've single crocheted in the top of every stitch and space all the way around, that'll bring you back to the beginning. You should have 36 stitches. You'll be confronted with this little guy here. That's the false stitch. We're going to skip that. We're going to join to the top of the first single crochet we made in this row. And then we're going to work one more row of single crochet. So we're going to chain one where we're standing, single crochet into the same stitch, and then work a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So when you get back to the beginning, you're going to skip this little guy here. That's what we call the false stitch. You'll still have 36 stitches and we'll almost be done. 
At the end of row 22, you should still have 36 single crochets. You're going to skip the little false stitch and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet you made. And fasten off. That's it for the container part. So the little sling part of our water bottle holder. Now we want to make ourselves a strap. Before we do that, take a moment to weave that tail in back and forth underneath some of the stitches in that last row. In order to determine how long a strap you want to make, you can do one of two things. Take your measuring tape and measure around your body crosswise. Um, so put, press this up against your body where you want it to hang on your person and measure from the top edge to the top edge all around your body. For me, that's 42 inches. So if you feel like 42 inches would be a nice long strike strap for you, you can do exactly what I'm going to do. But this is where you can really customize the strap pattern. You can make it long, you can make it short. If you want it to sort of hang at your hip, but you only want to throw it over one shoulder, then you want to measure that way too. If you don't have a measuring tape, it's really easy. You can just start chaining a length until you have a length that fits once you measure it around your body or however, however you want it to hang on you. So you don't necessarily need a measuring tape for this part, you just want to start chaining. I'm going to chain a length that equals 42 inches. Before you begin your chains, you want to give yourself a nice long tail because you want to be able to sew one side of your strap down to your water bottle holder and you're going to do the same thing on the other end. So start your slip knot with a nice long, I'd say that's almost a foot long, so 12 inches or 30 centimeters of tail. Then start chaining. So I'm gonna chain a length that equals 42 inches plus one chain for turning because we're gonna use the single crochet stitch. And if you're not measuring, just start chaining a length and keep measuring it around your body, hooking it up to both the edge, top edges of your little water bottle holder until you have a length that you feel is comfortable. And remember, there will be a little bit of stretch, not too much, but just a little bit, so keep that in mind too. I have chained 135 chains. I've measured it against my measuring tape, and that is the equivalent of 42 inches plus one chain for me. So I know all of our stitches and our tension and our hooks and our yarn are all a little bit different, so be sure to try and get a length that fits you or matches the measurement you're going for rather than an, a precise chain count. And remember, you're measuring from your first chain to your last chain. Don't include your long tails. Once you have a chained foundation row that is a good length for a strap, we're just going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each chain all the way back. So for me, that will be 134 stitches at the end of row one. This is sort of a, a slightly time-consuming part of the project. Working that chain row and then all of the single crochets all the way back is always sort of the fiddliest part of a pattern for me. So just take your time, make sure you don't twist your foundation row, just enjoy the process, and I'll see you at the end of row one. At the end of my first row of the strap, I've got 134 single crochet. So stitch count doesn't really matter here. What you're going for is nice, even, tight single crochet because this forms the foundation and the strength of our water bottle holder strap. We're going to do four rows in total of single crochet. In the future, if you were to make this again, you could skip this um, chain and single crochet row just by doing the single crochet foundation row. So you already have a good idea of how many stitches you need. So you could just sort of use the shortcut of the single crochet foundation row in the future if you make this again. Chain one and turn at the end of every row. You want four rows of single crochet in total. You're going to work a single crochet into every single stitch all the way across. And when you finish your fourth row, you will be on the opposite side of your tail. So you see me sort of fiddling with my long tail that we started with. This is for sewing this end. And at the end of row four, you should be on the opposite end. And we're going to leave a nice long tail there too. At the end of row four, you should still have the same stitch count in each of your rows, and four rows of single crochet makes a nice sturdy strap. You're on the opposite side now of the short tail, or the long short tail, <laughs> that you started with. Snip yourself an equally long tail. I'm using about 30 centimeters or 12 inches here, just so I've got enough to make sure that it's sewn down to my water bottle holder, nice and sturdy. 
fasten off, make sure that knot is nice and tight. You should have a long tail for sewing now on both ends of your strap. Sewing your strap to your water bottle holder is pretty easy. You're just going to thread up the long tail in your yarn needle, grab the edge of your strap and the edge of your water bottle holder, and just sew through the top stitches of the water bottle holder and the edge of all the stitches along your strap. You're going to want to sew back and forth a couple times just to make sure that it's on there nice and snug and it doesn't want to come off. Alright, I sewed all the way across once, all the way back, and then all the way back again. So I've gone back and forth three times, and now I just want to knot off, so I'm going to flip it so that I'm on the inside of the strap. I'm just going to make a small little knot. Nothing fancy. And then I'm going to weave that tail back and forth in across the backs of the stitches of the last row of single crochet in the water bottle holder. So back and forth underneath those stitches until the whole tail is woven in and that way I know it's not going to come undone. You're going to sew down the opposite side of your strap the same way. You want to make sure that you don't twist it. So take a second to just make sure it's all nice and flat. Thread up that long tail with your yarn needle. And then sew it to the exact opposite side of your water bottle holder from the first set. So if you have to sort of flatten your water bottle holder in half, and then just place your strap down on the opposite set of stitches, then that's the way to do it. And you just sew it down exactly the same way as the first side. Once you've knotted off and woven in your other short tail, you are all done. One water bottle holder with an attached strap, and now you're all ready to hit the trails. And there you go. Now you're all ready to head out for a walk in the woods or wherever it is you want to go for a walk. And remember, you don't have to completely pull your water bottle out of its holder if you need to take a sip. You can just sort of squoosh it down a little bit, take a sip, and then whoop back into its little holder. And if you're wearing it crossbody with a slightly longer strap, you don't even need to take it off. You can just sort of like pick it up, pull down on the holder a little bit, take a little sip of your water, and then off you go. You don't even have to break your stride. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed making this water bottle holder along with us today, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye! Hi, everyone. This is Mom and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.